from a bird's head to a dinosaur's tail. Remarkable discoveries have emerged from amber mines in northern Myanmar, encapsulating the teeming flora and fauna of an ancient forest 99 million years in the past. Back then, massive trees with trunks upwards of a meter in diameter oozed resin in response to threats like storms and insect swarms, and at the same time capturing myriad kinds of ancient life. But the way these astounding Burmese amber fossils make their way to scientists' hands poses an ethical quandary. The region they are mined from in Myanmar is rife with conflict. Most of them is not controlled by the Myanmar central governments. So it's controlled by the KIA, Kachin Independence Enemy. So these soldiers control this area and uh, collect tax from the miners. About 200,000 people were in the mine area. In 2014, ruby mines in the south dried up, driving new miners north to amber mines. They arrived at the, you know, the, the amber mines. Say, oh, so low tech. <laughs> we bring high technology. Go deeper. And they go deeper. They took they from the 10 meters, 20 meters, go straight to the 100 meters. So things change a lot. As these miners dug deeper, more and more impressive specimens emerged. As of 2019, over a thousand new species have been described. Most countries have laws to keep fossils in their borders, but as Burmese amber fossils are considered to be gemstones, they can be exported. A majority of the amber is smuggled into China and sold in Tengchong, a market in the Yunnan province. Here, middlemen hawk fossils to wealthy collectors as well as scientists. Xing Li Da specializes in vertebrate paleontology and frequents the amber market in pursuit of the next groundbreaking specimen. I love this part. I love this part. It makes me not like a scientist. Make me like a drug dealer. Because every time I go there, I need to bring cash. Small insects, it's gonna be cheap. But anything about the vertebrates, like feathers, wow, it's so expensive. One of Xing's most amazing discoveries was purchased at a surprisingly low price. The Myanmar guys found this specimen, it's like a small egg size, and he, he looks like a very beautiful print in the two small ant inside. And I used to look, look to see this specimen. At the first second, I said, oh my goodness, feather is not a print. And this feather is very, very base in the Evolution trip is a very base morphology. Only two possibility. One is from a very, very old cap the bird, or from a dinosaur tail. So I sent a specimen to my colleague. He put in the micro CT. We found at least eight or nine caudal vertebrates and hundreds of feathers. So this first time that people can see the real dinosaur, the fresh. Dinosaur. My, my face and the, these dinosaur embers pictures everywhere. When I go to the market, I cannot get anything because they're always giving very high price. Oh, Dr. Singh needs this 10 times price. As the sellers have realized the value of certain specimens, acquiring them for scientific studies becomes more expensive. This introduces an ethical issue around the mixed nature of commercial sales and scientific research. Wang Bo, a researcher at the Nanjing Institute of Geology and Paleontology, studies Burmese fossils to illuminate the behavior and ecology of the forest's insects. They inform the amber, and there are a lot of other special ants, such as unicorn ants. This ants has a very long haul. It's very different from all extant ants and they can use the mandible and the horn to ca catch the prey. We have found some ants are preserved together. Uh, all they are workers. So that means they have a very primitive sociality. For an even clearer picture of the past, Wang has been able to determine the color of some ancient moths through looking at nanostructures that refract light on the surface of wings. We use some a new technology such as confocal microscope, we can see the detailed structure, the nanostructure about the wing scales. 
and uh, based this nanostructure, we then uh, calculate the structure color. It looks like some golden and some yellow color. In the future, Wang hopes to understand the early days of parasites, like fleas, ticks, and mites. For the fossil record, we have uh, know the earliest fleas is from uh, from the Middle Jurassic. It's about 150 million years ago. But they are very primitive and they are quite different from the extinct flea because they lived in the host and uh, so they are rarely preserved in amber. But maybe in the near future we can find them. Despite the promises of Jurassic Park, extracting blood from these ancient parasites is almost impossible. But proteins may be feasible. The blood is just degraded and decay. And, but we can get, maybe in the future, we can get some protein. If we know some protein, we can get maybe some DNA sequence. Or of course, it's, they are just a fragment, but it's the first step for, for get some molecular evidence from these fossils. Some of Wang's research has involved collaboration with a private collector, Xia Fang Yuan, who has loaned many of his specimens to scientists. We are good friends and we just meet on uh, his website because he has a, a web shop like eBay. Then he showed me a lot of very well preserved amber. But this amber are on sale amber. Yeah, he said that we can study them and uh, they are free to earn. Wang and Xia recently collaborated on a paper describing the first ammonite, an extinct group of marine mollusks, in amber. Before the discovery of ammonite, we know nothing about the Burmese amber rainforest environment. But now we have the ammonite, so we have a very robust evidence that the forest grew near the coast. The ammonite is a very important index fossil for dating. It also pro uh, provides the robust evidence that this amber is middle creature. In order for these findings to be published in scientific journals, most require that the fossils are easily accessible to other researchers who want to test conclusions or extend the work. It's not can be a personal collection, even I'm a scientist. So, I, so I, with my friend, we build a museum in my hometown. Xia also plans to build a museum to house his collection in Shanghai. Currently, few new specimens are coming to the market. As in June of 2017, Myanmar launched a military offensive that took over the mining area. Most amber mining has ceased since then. Still, some researchers, like Xing Li Da, are hopeful that other extraordinary specimens are yet to be unearthed. We have some very nice lizard amber. You still can see the eyes. Big eyes watching you. <laughs> so imagine you can find a dinosaur. The whole dinosaur skull in them, but that is watching you. Oh my goodness. Even if the mines reopen, larger questions remain about the ethics of purchasing amber from a war torn country and what role science should be playing. <laughs>